Welcome to Crew King Kipe. They might be giants. I'm Rob. You can follow me at Rob Iman on Twitter. And tonight we are going to talk about the different stadium issues that are around Major League Baseball and the minor leagues. First, we're going to start off with minor league baseball. This week, I started the Pacific Coast League for the Sacramento River Cats. Next week, we'll start for the we'll start single A and double A for Richmond Flying Squirrels, San Jose Giants, Augusta Green Jackets, and all that good stuff. Oh wait a minute! I guess no. I guess all the minor leagues are back. They're just not back. I thought the other teams were starting June, April thirteenth. I'm sorry. But yeah, we and all the farms rosters are set and stuff, so we should start getting ideas of what's going to look like. You know, Chris Shaw is starting to hit better at at Richmond after after having a sl slow slow year adjusting to the double A last year, he's starting to hit better at, at Richmond. And then now we have an Andrew Suarez. No relation to Albert Suarez, but we have an Andrew Suarez in double A. Don't look great. Slade Heathcock could... Wade Heacock had a good game the other night versus Richmond. And the way the outfielding issues are with the Giants right now, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets moved up to AAA by midseason. Give him a harder look, closer look and stuff. Clayton Blackburn did not look great in his first start. He was roughed up for five earned runs. Hopefully he can turn that around. And they're trying Josh, Josh Osich in Sacramento as a closer. So we'll see how he does in the closer role. This could be a good way to get his tools sharpened and stuff in case he gets called up and stuff. And then Christian Arroyo and Kelby Tomlinson, they were tearing the ball up. And now, look at this. Kyle Crick is... Ty Beatty looked really good in his first start at, at the River Cats. Only gave up one earned run today. Kyle Crick pitched one inning and looked good. He's, has he finally turned a corner? You know, he, he was walking a lot of batters down in double A and single A. If he can start, if he can control the walks, I really can see Crick finally being the pitcher that they projected him. Maybe he's, just, he's not a starting pitcher, but he could be a guy that could be interesting for the bullpen in the future. But Beatty's looking like the real deal. He back he backed up that good start in spring training and really had a good good outing today against the Tacoma Rainiers. And then Kelby Tomlinson's on fire, and with all the uh, outfielding issues with Chris Marrero, Aaron Hill, and Jarrett Parker, if Mac Williamson can't get it coming back, soon, do you maybe consider trying see more of Kelby Tomlinson in left field? Try to get him in used to playing the outfield before calling him up and maybe hope he can be that offensive spark that they're missing in left field. That's going to be an interesting scenario. 
And we also have a signing to announce. The Giants have signed Melvin Upton Jr. yesterday to a minor league contract. And, and with all the feel all the hitting issues in left field right now with Chris Marrero. Aaron Hill and Jarrett Parker. We'll see how Melvin Upton does in Sacramento. If he, it could be a, one of those Jeff Francoeur type signings or one of those Pat Burrell signings. We don't know which way it will go. But if there's one plus going for Melvin Upton, he's a speedy guy. He could steal a base when he has to and, he could he could hit leadoff if they need a leadoff hit a true leadoff hitter and he would certainly be a guy who can steal a base for them so and then another what pit another player they signed this last week from the Minnesota organization. was Daniel Stubbs. Daniel, St Daniel Stubbs was signed earlier. He played for the Minnesota Twins last year. That's another outfielder they're kicking the tires on, and we just don't know how long they can stick with what they have in, the, in left field before they do make some sort of move. They, hopefully they can maybe start hitting better at AT&T Park next week and hope for things to come. And then next week, the River Cats. The upcoming week for the River Cats, they go to and that's not the schedule I want. I want the PCL schedule. All right. They will go on the road next. Yeah, you know, they start a road trip as of next week and oh, come on. All right, tomorrow they have a doubleheader scheduled against the Tacoma Rainiers to make up the rainout game on Thursday. Then after that, they start a road trip to Salt Lake City to take on the Salt Lake City Buzz, who are the LA Angels AAA affiliate. And then later in the week, the week they head to Las Vegas to play the Las Vegas 51s, who are the New York Mets AAA affiliate. But right now, you know, trending down is Clayton Blackburn. He's, I just really don't know if he's ever going to be a major league pitcher. He's just, he's getting too lit up, or do they try converting him to a reliever? Whereas Ty Beatty is looking like the real deal. I think you could see Ty Beatty up with the team sooner than later.
And it's starting to look like maybe what they, what they expect out of him. All right, now let's go on to stadium, the stadiums tonight. We're going to start off with the new Brave Stadium in Atlanta that's going to open on Thursday as the Atlanta Braves will play the San Diego Padres to open the open Sun Life Stadium. Or Sun Trust Stadium, excuse me. As they moved from Turner Field last year, and I guess it was very expensive renovate costs for a renovation at Turner Field, which was built after the Atlanta Olympics. They decided to move up to Cobb County and build a new ballpark called SunTrust Park. The stadium costs $672 million, and it's also an entertainment district on top of that. And there's 4,000 premium seats, and it holds about 41,000. There are a lot of different clubhouses out there. And a kid-friendly zip line and sandlot. But they need to start putting a winning product in Atlanta if they want if they want that to happen. We'll see. It's, it's, it's or attendance issues may drop off if they keep losing like they have been. All right, next stadium up is the new Arlington Stadium that got approved this last year by the voters. It is uh, slated to replace Globe Life Stadium in Texas, in Arlington. It is slated to seat between 42,000 and 44,000. But the, the, the big change for this one is going to be a retractable roof. It'll be right next to where the current ballpark is. And it'll have hotels and entertainment complexes. This is something that they hopefully will keep people in Arlington and stuff. The only, the only drawback to Arlington is that there is no public transportation for the fans. And... That's a downside to Arlington, but we'll see how it works out. Could it be as nice as Jerryland, that big stadium? Also with the Atlanta, though, too, with their new stadium going up, uh, they're, they're also going to get a new NFL stadium next year to replace the Georgia Dome called the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That's going up. See that works out though. Let's go to the have nots of baseball right now. First one is the Tampa Bay Rays. Last few years, they were going to get out of a, a substandard Tropicana field.
Yeah, they've been having a difficult time trying to find a stadium in Tampa, St. Pete, for the Rays to get out of the deteriorating Tropicana Field. They've tried building one on the waterfront in St. Petersburg. Their big issues with getting a new stadium is that they're having a hard time trying to find public funding for the stadium. And they got one year to go or else it's gonna or else I really see the Tampa Bay Rays heading towards relocation. Well, one possibility for the A's to for the Rays to relocate to is going to be is going to be Orlando. You know, Orlando's got a, got the magic. They got the nice arena there in or Orlando. So we'll see how that works. That's one possible possibility for relocation. Another possibility is Charlotte. I think Charlotte's a nice market. They have the Carolina Panthers, the Charlotte Hornets. And I think Charlotte might be a market that could be good for Major League Baseball if the Rays were to relocate to Charlotte. And I think Charlotte could get a stadium done. The next one after that is Montreal. Problem is Montreal, when the Expos were in town for many years, had attendance issues at that stadium. I don't know if Montreal would welcome back baseball or not. And I don't know. It's It would be a difficult sell to see baseball returning to Montreal, and I think the attendance issues would be a main would be a big problem again if the Rays ended up becoming the Montreal Expos next year. I think they end up relocating to Orlando might be their best bet. They can get a nice stadium in Orlando. But also, though, the Rays are falling on hard times on with the product on the field, too. You got Evan Longoria, who's probably going to be on the move one day, Chris Archer. But, you know, it's, it's been hard trying to find success after Joe Madden left the Rays for the Cubs. And now he's won a World Series for the Cubs. You know, just, they, need to get, they need to find some way to boost attendance to that stadium and... Tampa and St. Pete have played hardball team, I'm really thinking. And they're talking about putting a stadium right now. The best option is a stadium next to where Tropicana Field currently is. I think if they don't get a deal done soon, I think that their best bet is going to be Orlando. And I think I think Orlando could be an interesting draw for baseball. I think their next option, if, if they can't find anything in Tampa, St. Pete has to be Orlando. And I don't know. I think, I think Orlando could be, a, you know, they could probably get a nice stadium in Orlando if they, if they luck out and, Go to Orlando. We'll see. Same or my second possibility would be Charlotte. I think Charlotte's could be a really good market for baseball. But the problem is with the LGBT community, that could be a very uh, that, could, that, could, that might hurt people's chances of landing a baseball team with the transgender laws and LGBT community really going up in smoke and the 
politics in North Carolina right now. So I think it's going to be, I think their next option might be Orlando or move west. See how that works out. Next one is here in the Bay Area, the Oakland A's. Now the Oakland A's situation is a lot better than what it was last year now. A lot of the contingencies now are going to be how, how quick are the Oakland Raiders going to be getting out of the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. I know the Coliseum's now looking to trying to find some way to evict the Raiders now that they're going to be bound for Las Vegas in three years. And if they can find any loophole they can to get the Raiders out, they will. But in 2018, and then I think the Raiders may end up playing at Levi's for two years. They could end up going to Las, playing at that Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas if all else fails. But that's really good news for the Oakland A's there. They're going to have that whole complex to themselves within two years. 2019. In 2019, the Golden State Warriors will be leaving Oracle to move to San Francisco to the Chase Center. Then at Chase Center, will there's many ways they can use that Coliseum site to build a nice ballpark for the Oakland A's. One possibility is uh, if if the plumbing is well well enough to handle it, maybe maybe we see a nice renovation like they did with the with Angel Stadium in Anaheim. We might see that type of renovation. What happened after the L.A. Rams left the Anaheim Stadium to go play in St. Louis? The A's have looked at also building a new ballpark at Howard Terminal. But a renovation at the Coliseum, you can maybe look at taking down Mount Davis, maybe adding seats into the foul territory. And call it a day on that. But we'll see if maybe anything at Howard Terminal comes into fruition. But the big advantage they have with the 
Coliseum complex is the fact that it's easy access to public transportation at that ballpark. You can get on the BART and get and back pretty quick and stuff, and it's good for public transportation, whereas Howard Terminal is not necessarily great as in terms of public transportation. But you can put a nice ballpark there that can rival AT&T Park. There we go. And after the Raiders do leave for Oakland, after the Raiders do leave for Vegas, we'll see how long it takes to tear down Mount Davis. But you'll be able to see the Oakland Hills and Leona Quarry. And you'll see the original Coliseum. And it would look a lot nicer than what they have right now at the Oakland Cal Alameda County Coliseum. But also with all the debt that's still on that call on Mount Davis. I wouldn't be surprised to see Oakland take legal action on the Raiders to pay to tear down the tear down Mount Davis. Well, that's going to be up to John Fisher and Unless Lou Wolf was, well, was Lou Wolf was, was a guy who we didn't try hard enough to try to get a new stadium for the A's and kept dragging his feet, and that hurt John Fisher's chances for the A's to get a new stadium. And now that the the, the clock is really on the Raiders on the A's, excuse me, to get a new stadium. Now with revenue sharing, uh. Losing revenue sharing in the next few years, and they're not going to let them be a, a small market team anymore. They have to get on their feet and try to start winning too. So that could factor into a lot of things as in terms of, of the Oakland A's trying to get a new ballpark. I'll be back in one minute. Now with all this 
but the pressure is also on for the A's to start getting fans to the stadium. Try to start winning it, even if it means maybe putting Bob Melvin on the hot seat, if nothing else. All right, now in AAA with their baseball. Yes, AAA, there's some teams looking to build baseball stadiums to draw AAA baseball. One of those teams, one of those cities is San Antonio. They've been looking to build a bar, ballpark in downtown San Antonio. To attract a new, to attract a AAA team to San Antonio. And they would likely replace the Colorado Springs Sky Sox, which would likely be where the Rangers would affiliate next. And the Colorado Springs uh, ballpark is not great at all. But what will likely happen is the Astros will head to Round Rock in 2019. You might see the Brewers, who are currently affiliated with Colorado Springs, head to Fresno once a team relocates to San Antonio. But also the San Antonio AAA ballpark is maybe starting to go up and smoke a little bit, so you might see, still might see AAA affiliation changes. Their biggest problem is San Antonio has the lowest attendance in the double a texas league but that might be because it's a suburban stadium It's not a matter of if, but when San Antonio gets a new ballpark. And we'll see how that works out for them. And then we could see the wheels turn on affiliation changes by 2019 once San Antonio gets a AAA team. I think, like I said, I think we see the Rangers go to San Antonio. You see Houston go to Round Rock, and then you see the Brewers affiliate with Fresno within two years. And call it a day with that. Well, we'll see what happens with some of these stadium issues and stuff, and hopefully they get resolved in the coming years or so. It'll be interesting to see what plans come out come up in the next uh, year or two with all these new baseball stadiums going up. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys have a good night. I will see you tomorrow.